What's going on, guys and gals? Chris, the Bonafide Hustler, coming to you live from the inside of my office. Today, talk about current market kind of situations, and we're going to be talking about lessons learned, things like that. So, welcome to the channel. My name is Chris, the Bonafide Hustler. Um, you can subscribe to me here on YouTube. You can also find me on Instagram at the Bonafide Hustler. This is just a little quick show I want to do with a little bit of Q&A at the very end, or even maybe within the show. I don't expect the show to last really any more than 20 or 30 minutes, but I do want to kind of more uh, ready for the next time something like this comes around. So anyways, that's pretty much what's going on. I think everyone knows what's going on in the market right now. That's pretty obvious. Um, uh, eBay sales are pretty much down for most people, right? I, I would say for me, myself, like absolutely. Um, and that is not really... You can kind of offset that by listing a little bit more, but just remember that when you list more, you have to be listing more of the good stuff anyway. Like it's not if you just list more random items that you're mysteriously going to start doing better. It's not really like that. You want to list more good items. Very, very important. Um, but yeah, eBay is down, at least for me. Most of the people that I talk to, like eBay is down. And if it's not down, you know, congratulations. That's really good. So uh, I realize that just speaking for myself, is not is not the universal kind of thing. But I, from all most of the people that have talked to me behind the scenes on Instagram, for example, that it is a little bit down. I can put this into a live feed. So if you're watching right now, it says live right down there. Um, you can actually answer my question as I ask it to you. And I'll ask the actual people out there that are watching right now. First of all, two questions. One is hopefully everything sounds good. I have a little microphone right here. And second of all, is eBay down for you? So let me know. Okay. So the current market situation is that eBay is down. Uh, Amazon is, I would say, doing pretty well. It's thriving, however, when it comes to a third party sending in stuff. Uh, I think they're only allowing the essentials to get sent in or something like that, if I'm not mistaken, um, which is crazy because I have a lot of like really non-essential things like over here in the corner that I need to send in, but just like no way I can do it. So in the corner we have, you know, we have controllers for video game kind of stuff. We have board games. We have uh, electronics that are sealed and plastic. We have a bunch of other random stuff in there, uh, calculators, things I cannot sell. It's not, not exactly essentials at this point. Um, I'm going to read some responses from the public real quick that are coming in right now. Uh, Astro Picker says down a little bit, like eBay's down. eBay's down for Heather the reseller, down for Suzanne. Um, yeah, so there's nothing wrong with it being down. I don't think anybody could have really predicted this whole thing coming around and really the repercussions of everything once, it just seems like everything is shut down. Most of the towns now are on, you know, some sort of a lockdown kind of situation. Um, me, this morning when I was doing a story on Instagram, I was still at Goodwills and everything like that. I didn't find anything, found a candle, which was awful. It was a good candle, but like for the whole day, you know, three hours of, of thrifting, all you find is one candle. That was terrible. Um, but I put it on my Instagram story and people were so astonished that my Goodwills in Austin, Texas were still open. And I thought that was kind of peculiar because um, I assumed that all the ones across the nation were, but clearly maybe I'm a, we have an anomaly situation. And it's not to say that it can't change next week and just close. So um, yeah, David w Wittig is saying that his are still going strong as well. If you, if Goodwill is going well in your hometown, comment right now what town you live in. Uh, I know Savers here, which I think Value Village is Savers basically. Those are closed for sure. They closed a while back. Um, any mom and pop kind of thing here in Austin, you can get a pretty big fine if you are a non-essential store and you are open up. Um, so I know that much. Um, yeah, I'm just curious. Uh, yeah, every, everything seems like it's such a shutdown in most people's towns, but I'll try to recite to you the towns that are still open with Goodwill. It looks like Sarasota, Florida um, is open. So if you have open Goodwills, put it in the feed. Maybe I can recite it, and other people maybe in close-by towns can go. And if they have that urge to thrift, you know, you can go there. Um, it's very important to also consider... Uh, that if you're going to places like this, you are at risk, you know, um, and it's not exactly super advisable, but if you don't touch many things or whatever, I mean, if you have really good uh, hand sanitizer, all that kind of stuff, you should be okay. But something to consider, just, you know, don't go risking your life for, you know, $50 of resale or $100 of future resale, for example. Um, so also part of the current market situation is that people are really scared because they don't know how long it's going to last. And we have, uh, you know, things like the president saying that, oh, it's going to last until Easter. We have other uh, professionals that are looking at this situation, not really seeing exactly the, the curve that they want to slow down. Uh, they're not seeing it. And they know it's just going to ramp up a little bit more. Um, so those kind of things are 
making people guess maybe two to three months of living like this. So it's interesting. Um, I'm not meaning to freak anybody out or anything like that, but it seems like most of us are have a little bit of like worry. And there's nothing wrong with that because worry usually comes when there's something that is presented in front of you that affects your life in some way. It alters your lifestyle or it forces you to think differently and get into a very uncomfortable situation. And it's even more multiplied when you have kiddos and things that are like depending on you. I can imagine that it's just a very scary time. Um, that said, um, people are very much home right now. Most people are on lockdown, quarantine, whatever you call it. They're on those kind of things. And that can be actually an advantage. So the current market situation, while terrible, poses an advantage in a certain way. And that is people are actually buying, you know, goods. They're on, they're, they're buying streaming services, for example, on Hulu, Netflix, Disney, like they're buying these services, video game streaming, I would imagine would be up right now. Everyone's playing the newest and greatest video games and they got headsets on and people are just realizing that this could last one or two months, honestly. I caught word the other day that my gym might open on May 1st. Like that's the corporate kind of official start date. It could be earlier, but they're all saying May 1st. So that's still another five weeks away or something like that. It's really crazy. Um, <laughs> yeah, so uh, so people are also home, right? Which means they're away from the gym. So I kind of, this allude, This is a, how do I take, how do I say this? But my previous statement, how the gym is closed means people that are originally going to the gym, people that are all into health and fitness inside places, they can't go to these places anymore because these places were, pla were places where people would be grouped together and do group fitness and They'd be very tightly knit, like within six feet of each other. And those kind of places are shut down. So what that means is they still want to get that feeling for the most part, because uh, like Heather, the reseller says right here, that if it doesn't, if gyms don't open until two to three months from now, or this keeps on going for two to three months, she's like, I'm just going to gain so much weight. And a lot of people are fearing those kind of things, which leads me to my next point. And that is people are spending a fair amount of money now on health and fitness type stuff. If I go to any um, like outdoor goods store or academy or Dick's Sporting Goods here in town. Um, an academy is open. I don't know how it's an essential business, but it is. Um, yeah, all the weights are gone. Kettlebells, dumbbells, plates, all that kind of stuff is wiped off the shelf. Um, all the bars, all the stretchy bands, all that kind of stuff. And that's just because these people want to maintain some sort of like, you know, lifestyle they had before this whole thing went down and they are freaking out a little bit. So yeah, you know, think when you're at home, you're more likely to open the fridge, you know, 20 times a day, whereas maybe you would open it only five times a day, for example. Now you're opening it like 20 times a day. You're eating a little bit more than normal. You're having a relaxing time with your family. And sometimes it feels almost like vacation. But we have to remember that this isn't a vacation. This is something that we need to get adjusted to. And it could last long term. It's very important to really realize that and to maybe curb things like eating habits and maybe stop thinking about it as a vacation per se and get back into shape or do the same routine you were doing not just because the gym is closed, just stop, right? Because this could last a while. Um, but yeah, a lot of people, I, man, I walked into a Goodwill last week and there was a guy that picked up, he had picked up eight, maybe 10 dumbbells and it said $19.99 for the whole set, which is crazy because those eight or 10 dumbbells probably could resell on uh, local markets for somewhere between one and 150. And they were torn up iron dumbbells, you know, rusted and everything. But it doesn't matter. People are going crazy trying to look for these things right now. So if you do have access to weights and you don't maybe use them, but you have them in your garage or dumbbells, whatever, post those things locally. It's very important. Yeah. So um, anything else? Let me see what, what else is open uh, around here. <clears throat> anything open? I don't see. If your Goodwills are open in your town, let me know what town that is. I don't want to know where it's closed. I want to know where it's open because the closed ones are easy to find. Like I want to know where they're open. So that way we can kind of notify some of the other people that are watching the show uh, where to go. So far, I've only seen one place, Sarasota, Florida. So Austin, Texas, as of right now, as of today, still good. We have Cajun Roots Reseller saying, I enjoy your content bona fide. Hey, Cajun, thanks a lot. And by the way, there's a lot more content to come indefinitely because <laughs> I'm getting not bored, but I'm like, all right, it's a perfect time to connect with my audience again. And I'm, I'm at home a whole bunch, which means I'm working on things. Um, so I'll be making a lot of live shows. And that leads me to my next point, which is Thrift Battle. All right. Remember that show? That was really, really fun. That's coming back. And if you want to be on Thrift Battle, okay, if you want to be considered for Thrift Battle, um, DM me on Instagram at the Bonafide Hustler. Send me a DM. Make sure you have access to good internet decent camera and good audio. 
from there. You know, Thrift Battle, basically the premise of the show is two people show up, I'm the host, maybe me and Eric, the college picker, or both the host, and person number one has five goods that they tell me about, but the other person, their, their contestant, has no idea what those five goods are, and vice versa, right? And you battle those goods in order, one, two, three, four, five. So person against person, thrift battle, and then we, as the judges, will um, call out who wins based upon the react the the show input. So it's a live show, and people will be like, "Oh, it's person this person or that person wins the round, or whatever." It's only five rounds. It's really quick. It should only last thirty or forty five minutes, um, and that's the premise of thrift battle. So it's a it's a battling type show with thrifted items or even items maybe you have in your around your house that are from a death pile or something like that. But either way, we just want to learn. And that's what we're going to be doing. So Thrift Battle is coming back. If you want to be considered, DM me, Instagram, direct message behind the scenes, at the Bonafide Hustler. Yeah, the battles are really fun. Trust me, they're super fun. Um, okay, so far, oh, okay, Columbia, South Carolina has open Goodwills. What's up, Harry Tornado? Good to see you. Also, while I am uh, home indefinitely for the next month or two, it seems like, right, this could last a long time, if anybody has a podcast that they want me to be on or a show or a YouTube channel they want to interview me on, I would consider it at this point because now I have a fair amount of time at home, which is cool. So I would definitely consider it. Send me a DM on Instagram as well, the Bonafide Hustler. Yeah, we're bringing back the thrift battles for sure. Okay, so back to the current market. Uh, thrift stores are closed. No garage sales. That's the part that really gets me. I am so bummed because of no garage sales. And it's not like they can't run because you can post a garage sale on Craigslist right now and be just fine. But garage sales are typically, at least in this town, they're run by people that are mostly 30 years old or above. Some, Many of them are from 40-year-olds and above, 50-year-olds and above. And why I say that as a very definite kind of, I mean, I've been to thousands and thousands and thousands of garage sales in my life, and the majority of the time, it's people that are maybe 40 and over, okay? And 40 and over is where the category gets kind of high risk for this current situation, the thing that is floating around in the air. Uh, you know, they're in a high-risk category, so you really don't want to be around a whole bunch of people. So if you had a, you know, a garage sale planned for the summer or, or for the spring or whatever, I mean, that's the last thing on your mind is to run this sale and have a bunch of interaction with people that might be even coughing, uh, that kind of stuff. You just the last thing on your mind. So I am not, to no surprise why garage sales are not existing right now. I was at a Goodwill this morning, the very first Goodwill we went to. I'm sifting through trying to find some stuff. It's not a big deal, just chilling. And then I noticed these like two guys, kind of very dirty looking. Um, they had flannels on. They're just like, Ugh. they just didn't look like they were with it at all. And um, one guy started coughing. He was like, oh. The other guy coughed again, and then I was like, hmm, that's interesting. And then like three seconds later, they all coughed together. I was like, all right, that's enough. Like, I'm out of here. I was far enough to hear the cops, I mean, the coughs, and I left immediately. I was like, no, 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 I am not messing with this. I don't care if there's any good finds in this place. I'm not messing with this at all. Um, so uh, Newington, Connecticut, John Haywood says they are open there as well. Okay, so... This is what the current market is so far. eBay is usually down for the most part. Amazon Essentials can only be sent in for the most part. People are pretty scared. Uh, people are also very much home. Uh, people are spending money on health and fitness stuff, um, bikes, skateboards, uh, weights, things like that. Thrift stores are closed. There are no garage sales. And um, there's something floating around the air that is invisible that is like freaking everybody out. So that's the current market situation. That said, what can we learn from this kind of current market situation to maybe hedge the next time that something like this comes around? Because that's the most important part. It's a complete waste if you don't learn from something that causes you some sort of pain, discomfort, or alters your lifestyle in a negative fashion. If you're not willing to learn from something, then basically when it happens again, you're going to go through this entire huge reaction and kind of flip out a little bit internally. And it's not good for you, right? The most important thing is to be as prepared as possible uh, for anything like this that comes around. And quite honestly, this is no different than, let's say, maybe an asteroid fund. If you're a homeowner, for example, it's always advised to have what's called an asteroid fund, which is, you know, if the AC quits or something goes crazy, um, or if, let's say, hail goes on your roof and you have to pay a 2% deductible or 1% deductible with your insurance company to get a whole new roof, these are all part of the things that need to be considered with an asteroid fund. So, so um, it's important to realize that 
um, that this is kind of no different than an asteroid fund. This is just a really big asteroid that came, you know? It's a giant one that is causing people to lose their jobs. It is laying off people. It is only keeping really essential people around to work. Um, it's probably the worst asteroid of all. It's something that nobody, I, I don't think anybody could have really, I wouldn't say, no one could have predicted it. People could have definitely prepared for it. And there are a lot of people that have, but there are a lot of people that didn't. And they just, it's too big of a hit, you know, and I get it. It totally is. So how do we learn from a situation like this? Because if we take nothing away, then we're not doing ourselves any justice for anything that can remotely be like this later. Um, so we have to learn a couple things. What can we learn? And that is that, um, fully digital businesses may survive in a time like this. This is one of those things where you have to consider, hmm, maybe this is the wake up call to start looking into some fully digital business of some sort, all right? This could be affiliate marketing kind of stuff, right? Because when you're an affiliate marketer, for example, you are touting someone else's um, goods that you will wholeheartedly believe in. And then when it sells based upon your link, you're getting some sort of affiliate back cut to you paid, but it's not your product. You're just basically selling your audience a product that is not yours, but that you 100% believe in, you swear by, and perhaps a product that maybe you could have created, but it's just already created and it's much better than what you would have ever done. So affiliate marketing is something to consider, but usually when you do affiliate marketing, you have to have some sort of internet expertise and some sort of a following and or either or something like that. You have to have things like that. I don't dabble too much in internet marketing myself, but I know that internet marketing still is one of those things that's very much alive right now. Um, selling courses, selling guides, digital products are very important too. Um, if you're like me, I get hit with all kinds of Amazon courses and ads and things like that on Facebook. And there's nothing wrong with that, right? These are courses and ads. Maybe they work, maybe they don't. Okay. These are courses and digital products. Maybe they work, maybe they don't work, but either way they were created by an individual who more than likely believed in everything that was in that product. Um, does it stand the test of time? Who knows if it stands the test of time, but either way, those are some of the things that can sell in a time like this. Uh, even when people are guarding their money, people are bored. You have to remember that. And there's only so much Netflix you can watch and stuff like that before you start realizing like, I kind of want to, be educated. I want to, I kind of want to listen to podcasts or audiobooks or I want to get into a course or learn something new. Like this is a very popular thing that's going on right now. For the first one or two weeks, maybe people are killing time with video games and uh, Netflix and Hulu and streaming. And then eventually if you have that kind of hungry mentality, it gets really old. All right. And it's time to learn something new. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's actually a really good skill. Not a good skill. It's a good trait to want to learn something new that can potentially increase your life because you have a new skill, right? Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah, affiliate marketing, digital products, courses, guides, whatever. I mean, I have guides um, and I haven't gone hard on pressing them, but, you know, maybe in the next two or three weeks, maybe four, maybe I will. Who knows? I mean, those are just chilling there and I can tout them as much as I want. I swear by them, which is cool. And a lot of people in the audience love them. So, why not sell them? I do have affiliates on my products too. If you guys are interested in being an affiliate with my products, 100%, I will cut you in. Uh, send me a DM on Instagram at the Bonafide Hustler. Yeah, and if you have my products and you know the quality of my products and you want to rep them on your channel or your following, we can do that. Um, Merch by Amazon. This is an interesting one, right? I think my tier is somewhere around like 50 or 75 or 100 shirts a day, like upload, something weird like that. So I'm on a very high tier, but I don't have, I have maybe eight designs up. They're mostly bona fide hustler stuff. A couple of randos that I created that are still selling that I created probably two and a half years ago. Um, but yeah, merch by Amazon is an interesting thing that fully digital can be done from home. All you need is a laptop, internet connection, and some sort of basic graphic design program. I even want to say <clears throat> that Canva, all right, which is a free uh, app, not an app, but a free, I guess it's an app site, whatever, canva.com. It's like, it's like saying canvas, but without the S. So canva.com. I swear there's a thing now that says t-shirts. There's like a, a, a template for t-shirts. And if you click that template, it opens up to maybe 10 more. So, you know, you can save these things in so many different file formats. And I'm pretty sure I haven't experimented yet, but there's a way through Canva to get your first designs up for Merch by Amazon. So if you have a dead Merch by Amazon account or something with very low amounts of products in it, but high amounts of like, uh, you know, 
upload tiers, right? Uh, then that's a missed opportunity. It's a something to maybe work on in a time like this um, to see if that might be up your alley. And it's okay because basically you become, instead of let me a reseller, you know, you become more of an analytical person that studies the trends of uh, the shirt market. For example, on Amazon, you are very much aware of all the holidays coming up, whether it be Mother's Day, President's Day, you know, Father's Day, Christmas, Hanukkah, Halloween, like all these things. And you can make sure it's based upon these things. You can make sure it's for Breast Cancer Awareness Month or something like that. These are all kinds of things that you can create. And if you have a pretty much, if you have a witty kind of humor um, and you can put some things together, there's a really good chance you can make some money. So uh, that is on canva.com. We'll give you the templates. I'm almost positive you, we could do it through Canva. Um, and then from there, we, I mean, I'm pretty sure you can save it in a certain format, upload it to Amazon, you'll be fine. That's what I'm guessing because why would they put a t-shirt uh, template in Canva? Like I'm pretty sure it's a t-shirt template that you can go to Teespring with all these other places and upload. So that's interesting. It's very interesting. I have a upload tier of I think 50 or more. So I can't remember the last time I actually put a shirt on my store for upload, but it gives me you know, if I have 10, I mean, if I have an hour of downtime here in Austin, Texas, got some good ideas in my head, whether they be beer oriented, wine oriented, maybe football oriented or something like that. Um, perhaps a funny saying right now with um, what's going on, then I can create those things and I can upload them. And if they don't sell, that's fine. You know, you can you can take them down or they get phased out by Amazon over time. But if they do start selling, that's good. Then they start moving up banks and, you know, they could do very well. So interesting kind of stuff. I'm going to say hi to some people that are in here. Tracy McCurry, hello from Austin, Texas. That is where I live as well. And um, yeah, Kelly Rand says, I wish I could pump some of his Strella brand. Yeah, uh, that might happen one day. We can see some of the Strella stuff right here. Pretty cool, huh? Um, yeah, that's part of something bigger later. So I have, a, I have a private label, like outdoors clothing brand. And it's part of something later. You get to see a little bit more of that on my other channel, which is Bod Dam. And if you go to Instagram and you put at bod, B-O-D-D-A-M-N, then you can check out that channel too. It's all workout stuff. Okay, let's talk about um, let's talk about what is some of the other stuff that you can be doing. YouTube channel. Oh, yeah, okay. So let me, before we get to YouTube channels, one of the things that you should be doing right now, and a learning kind of thing, is if you were heavily, like, let's say, on Amazon or eBay and nothing else, this is a good time to really look back at like the whole thing that I was trying to tell you guys about two years ago, one year ago, whatever, double and triple listing to local markets. Very, very important. So if you have a thing that you bought from a thrift store, for example, um, I have a light box. I, I bought one last week, right? A light box that I am going to be listing on eBay. It's also going to be in my antique booth. That's where it originally was going to go day one, but antique booth closed. Um, but it's probably on eBay antique booth. I don't know my, if it will survive eBay shipping, but we'll see. eBay, it'll be sitting in the antique booth while it's on eBay and while it is also on Facebook Marketplace and on uh, Craigslist. It's like quadruple list, but it's the same verbiage on all of the, you know, the listings. So the same titles, same verbiage. You adjust the price a little bit. Obviously, eBay would be the highest price out of all of them. Um, because it has to include shipping and perceived PayPal, I mean, perceived fees and all that kind of stuff through eBay. Um, but these are the things that are going on in my head. I'm like, a beer sign sells really well on eBay. A beer sign sells really well in the booth too, that's for sure. Um, and then I had someone inquire about it the other day already on Facebook Marketplace. So this is a $10 beer sign, maybe $12 beer sign, and potential, you know, reselling locally for around 80 bucks or something. So that's pretty cool. Um, so double and trist, uh, double and triple list locally, very, very good kind of thing that you can start now learn from this, right? Learn because Facebook marketplace and Craigslist is still kind of going. Um, and people, the funny thing is most of my outdoor goods were the first things to go like a week ago, would it be bikes, uh, sold longboard, uh, the other day. Um, yeah, those kind of things. So you gotta be thinking on outdoors first. If you have any outdoors goods, a little bit more on the bigger, bulkier side with some longer dimensions that don't belong on eBay, for example, then list them locally. Like, honestly, people are really looking locally for a lot of weird things. Uh, the other thing I want to talk to you guys about is <clears throat> it might be the time not so much to start a YouTube channel, but if you have a YouTube channel, maybe start building on it. But if you want to start something new and fresh and cool, YouTube, TikTok, 
Instagram, you have to get a following going. It's very important because a following is kind of powerful in a time like this too. Just like we, I can communicate with you guys right now. And in the communication with you guys, you know, you hear a micro drop for Strella, for example, you hear the fact that I have some guides and stuff like that. And the fact that this video after it's live becomes an actual video on my channel with ads on it, plus links below it. I mean, there's all these little hooks in the water that are just kind of just chilling there. So, um, you know, over time with enough videos, people bite the hooks. That's just how it is. If you have a good channel with good value that pumps people up or it gives them some entertainment value or actual value, people tend to want to support you behind the scenes as well. So YouTube channels with digital products, preferably, or some sort of affiliate marketing baseline kind of products that you have to have a merch for sure. If you're going to do any kind of products, do merch first, hopefully through Teespring or something on YouTube, wear your own merch. You know, I'm not wearing my merch, but wear your merch when you're out. And that way people can kind of buy it. And like each shirt that they buy, maybe you make three bucks on it, maybe two bucks, maybe four bucks, depending on where you, what avenue you put it on. But two bucks, three bucks, four bucks starts adding up pretty quickly. Um, and then the other thing that you might want to consider is just other social media for branding. So like I said, Instagram and TikTok, while it's a little bit harder to monetize those things and you have to think about things like Linktree and links that when they click one link, it leads to like 10 more. So it's like highly organized. So when you're doing things like Instagram, for example, and you don't have what's called the swipe up function or anything like that, you want to consider doing things like Linktree, which is very important. And with Linktree, you can put anything that you're affili affiliated with. You can put your own products in there, uh, private Facebook groups, all kinds of stuff. You can put it in these Linktree links and it becomes one link only, boom, like Linktree slash the Bonafide Hustler, for example. And that would be my link tree for all my products and everything possible that I'm involved in, but it keeps it nice, tight, concise. So if I ever on Instagram and I don't have the swipe up function, I can just be like, the link is in my bio. You go there and you can get access to any of my guides. Something to consider. Um, now I'm going to go into the feed and I'm going to ask you guys one question, maybe a couple questions, but the very first question is how are you pivoting in a time like this, and you know what pivot means. It means you go, oh, and you go, okay, not that, and you go this way. How are you pivoting in a time like this? Very important. Let me know. Um, <clears throat> all right. Some people are selling a lot of shoes, and if you are reselling still at this point and you're reselling stuff locally or on eBay, what kind of things are being bought right now? I'm curious. Tracy McCurry has a uh, comment right here. It says, I've learned so much Binge watching your lives, videos, and Instagram. Thank you for what you've done for me. You're very welcome, Tracy. Um, that is cool. <laughs> Let's see what else we have here. Uh, people are talking about, do I think thrift stores, this is from Johnny Cordova, do you think thrift stores will be flooded with donations after we get back to normal? And do you think it'll be wise to buy new instead of used? All right, so people in a time like this, um, since there's no, you know, like jobs are getting slashed, all kinds of stuff is going down. People are scared in general, unless you are like a super amazing stock trader or real estate kind of mogul in a time like this, most people are scared and they're probably eating into some sort of savings or some sort of relief fund or something like that. Or they're doing things the, the people that make the biggest money in a time like this are typically traders, financial people, financial market, anything uh, option kind of people uh, and real estate kind of stuff, right? Because when people want money, they liquidate assets. So real estate would be one of those things people want to sell their house. They got to start, they got to live and they want to downsize a little bit. You know, you can get houses for a really good deal. I would imagine at a time like this. But what I'm saying is, um, do I think people are going to be donating a whole bunch? Look, people are at home right now. Okay. They're itching to find so many things to do, productive things. Like I said, there's only so much Netflix and Hulu and Disney you can watch before you realize, hey, maybe we can paint a wall or two. Maybe we can do finally that outdoor project that we wanted to mess with. We can find maybe we can finally also clean the closets out and have everything ready for the garage sale that we're gonna have or a big donation thing that we're gonna do once this thing is over. So absolutely. Do I think there's gonna be a lot of donations? Yes, a ton. I think it's gonna be a lot because everyone is home. You can't have donations without being kind of home. Like you have to be home to go, I don't wear this or I, you know, I don't need this anymore. So they, you put it in some sort of box or trash bag or whatever. And as those things get bigger and bigger over time, you take it to a Goodwill or a Savers, right? Well, I think people are going to be really bored and they're going to be starting to do those kind of things. They're going to be cleaning their houses, getting everything a little bit more organized. And it's just tasks until 
this whole time is over with and when everyone goes back to work the normal way and everyone's schedule gets busy again this is a time where everything's very slowed down for most people so i do think that people are going to go crazy and like start donating a bunch of stuff will the goodwill donations be infected well apparently it can only last on what clothing or shoes five seven max so that's i would say you know once this is all over maybe wait you know <laughs> maybe wait two weeks something like that um okay what do we got here what else we got um i'm gonna start reading a bunch of stuff out of the feed right here you got a really cool comment or whatever that you want me to read out i will read it um Nick K says eBay to AB. So he's doing eBay to eBay sniping. So it's basically OA, online arbitrage. eBay to Mercari sniping, Mercari to eBay sniping. Um, he's finding bad listings that were misspelled or good items, but with bad listings that were typically misspelled, underpriced auctions and stuff like that. So that's how he's sourcing right there in a time where thrift stores are closing, garage sales are not there. Very interesting, you know, tactic. Very cool. Um, Kenny Rand says, I'm just dumping everything I have. That's kind of like what I'm doing too. I am going through my entire house and looking like, oh man, like I don't wear that or I don't use that. And it's worth 50 bucks, 100 bucks, maybe 200 bucks, or maybe I wear those pair of sunglasses only once a year. Why do I have one or $200 tied up in these pair of sunglasses, for example? So those are the kind of things that I'm going to be, um, you know, putting on eBay uh, every single day. Um, people are listing their death piles, like Junk Girl Patty in the feed right here. Running sales and letting things um, that I've had a while go cheaper. So very good. That's a good strategy right there. Bluegrass Picker, completely unrelated comment, but he wants to say something. I love your workout channel. Thank you. I took most things out of my antique mall booths and indoor booths. Hey, that's really cool. eBay is on fire for me. Um, Patrick Mahomes stuff is still selling fast. Cool. So that's interesting. So before his booth closed, his antique mall booth closed, he went in there and took inventory. And now that's the inventory that he is selling either locally or on eBay. That's really smart. Um, Cajun Roots Reseller says, I'm staying home. I'm going only out as needed. So you're smart. I'm all, he says, I'm selling games. Games. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Everyone's playing board games and stuff like that. Puzzles. Yep. I have a lot of puzzle posts on Facebook. I like with my friends. Toys, dolls, a lot of hard goods. Cool. Um, what else we got here? Um, so how are people pivoting? I'm curious. I'm looking at this real quick. John Brown or something like that. Bound says, I can't wait for yard sales. I won't step foot into a thrift store during yard sale season. I'm smart. Yeah, yard sales are really good. Uh, other people are flipping in their, their death piles. That's really good. Um, Cajun Roots says, I'm running a four-tier sale on my eBay store. Very good. Um, Gamester28 says, hey, Chris, how are you holding up? It's hard, man. I'm holding up okay. I have some money saved up, but that's pretty cool. However, I have you know some really good things that are up on my store that maybe I wanted to hold a little bit longer, for example, like I posted a bike the other day for almost three grand that I am 1400 into, right? Brand new in the box. So I decided to post that for what I would let it go for. And so there were five watchers in a week and I said, I sent all five of those watchers a $2,500 offer. So we'll see if I get it. Who knows? It's a $2,900 bike. That's what it's listed for. 2,500 is the offer I sent five people this morning. You know, it's in a box, so all I gotta do is put a label on it. Um, we'll see. It's not bad. I mean, it's just another infusion of money that's not really super needed, but it would be nice to have it. So, um, what else? What else do we have in here? Um, all right, let's take a look. Games are great. Yep. <laughs> all right. Yeah, everyone's saying sell your stuff. So yeah, I'm selling all kinds of wacky stuff like running shoes, like I'm going in my closet, boots that I don't wear anymore, running shoes, boots, electronic gear, because you know I've been a vlogger for what six or seven years now. There's some cameras in here that I do not use anymore. Um, pivot head sunglasses that I originally wanted to take to garage sales. These guys, right? These are camera sunglasses. You see the lens in the middle right there. They still have the, the pawn shop tag on there. I bought them for like 20 bucks. But these usually resell between 60 and 100 dollars. So I'm like, eh. I mean, look at this. Should I go to a garage sale with this thing on? Look how terrible this looks. It looks like Dog the Bounty Hunter, except it's more like Douche the Bounty Hunter. It looks terrible. I don't like it. Um, yeah, I need to put I need to put this on, and I have to have those little like things here on my biceps, you know, the little things that look like this. And then what do I need? I need some pepper spray, and I need 
uh, a longer goatee, maybe a little tie thing right here. I think one of them has a tie going on right here. Do you know what I'm talking about? Anyway, do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, the Bounty Hunter. Um, here's another thing that's going to be listed pretty soon right here. This is a Garmin uh, mountain biking uh, computer that just came with one of my mountain bikes. Probably resell for around 50 to 100 bucks right here. Has the charge cable and everything. The proprietary dock is with it. So that's going to be going up on eBay today. Random stuff that's laying around. I mean, there's things also that I'm considering selling that I haven't, but I'm like, you know what? I've had this guitar since 1991, maybe. All right? This is my personal guitar. It's kind of cool. It has a Floyd Rose bridge on it and everything. It's a Charvel, not a Jackson, right? Which is the same company, except I think Jackson bought it. And so, yeah, this is a pretty cool uh, guitar right here. It's got a little metal flake look to it. It's really pretty. So... This right here, uh, I don't know, I think this is worth about a G, maybe a little bit more. So considering maybe selling that, I don't know, who knows? We'll see, pretty guitar. Uh, but I have a lot of stuff. I do have like a fair amount of things. I have video games, a ton of video games. You can see NES things right here. You know, I can get rid of those. I don't play them. I just don't play them. I don't care to be a collector anymore. I'm just, I don't know. So these are the kind of things that I am thinking about um, just to keep myself busy and just keep the whole you know, it'd be nice to make between 50 and 100 pure profit on eBay stuff for the month of April and whatever's left of March. I think that would be a good kind of goal. So we'll see if I can get there. Um, yeah. Um, people are saying golf equipment is selling. That's right. Most, I think golf courses are still public ones. They're still open. So that's pretty neat. Um, <laughs> and what else we got here? Most sporting goods. I just shipped the snowboards, what Scott Gilmore said. That's interesting because most uh, snowboard parks and all that kind of stuff are closed, but that's interesting that you are shipping a snowboard out. That's really crazy. Stony Boy Cordes said a Floyd Rose. Yeah, it's pretty neat. There's a Floyd Rose in there from basically, I think I got that guitar in 90 or maybe 91. Um, that was my first guitar my parent, my mom ever bought me. Um, have you ever thought about doing an auction through YouTube? No, I want to say that the Global Voodoo guy is doing that right now, which is cool. So I think it's working for him. That's That's neat. Maybe I will do that. It's actually a really interesting, uh, I mean, I don't know if he's the first one to do it, but I know that he's doing it. So um, either way, I mean, I'm pretty sure he's shipping things up, which is neat. Um, video games are huge right now because everyone is stuck at home. That's right. And these kind of video games that are back here are the original 8-bits, and I have some 16-bit ones too. I have a lot of 8-bit ones um, that are chilling there from original NES, so... Uh, there's all kinds of turtles in time, I have multiple copies of Mario 3, I have Double Dragon 1, 2, I think there's even another one. We have all kinds of stuff. All the good games are there. Um, but anyway, so this is uh, basically the end of the show. I wanted to basically go through <clears throat> what the current market situation is and what some of the things that we could learn from the show would be. Um, I, did, I just wanted through to... Uh, Kind of show you guys what I'm thinking in my head, and just remember this could last one to three months. You never know, you never know, right? One to three months. So, start pivoting now, like, start looking into those kind of things and going, All right, if you are sitting at your house, not making money on eBay, for example, maybe not making local money, just and you're sitting, you're like just mad, and you're watching YouTube videos relentlessly, not so much to even pick up on any good info, but just like kill time, and you're just making the problem worse for you. The best thing you can do is get your butt into action. By the way, before I ever finish that sentence, hit the like button, please. I haven't asked that the entire show. That'd be so cool if you guys hit the like button. But yeah, get your button to gear and just start the ball rolling on something small. If it's one or two, um, you know, shirt designs that you put up on Amazon, while those things might not sell, all right, it might lead you to look into canva which you go oh this is kind of fun and i have a lot of cool ideas and maybe it's not so much shirt number one or two or design number three that sells it's maybe design number 15 or design 20 when you start to realize what it takes to upload a shirt to amazon what it what does it take to research basic keywords what you can and cannot put in the title um it all comes through experience so if you're if you're sitting around going i gotta find another way to make money it has to work right now that's the worst kind of situation you want to be in. You want to be in a very learning type. You want to be in a very learning type mentality, with no super pressure on you. You want to be able to go, okay, I'm always going to be learning something. So let's start learning something different today. You know, and so I think for me, 
in the next couple of weeks, like I am going to experiment a little bit more with my merch store, my Amazon merch, because I have an opportunity there and I haven't messed with it too much. So just one of those things that I am thinking about. And sometimes you have to evaluate your own, your own situation and go, what do I have to where I can improve my situation somehow? What do I have in my current situation that can improve my situation? So for me, it's really cool, hard, expensive goods. I have some of those things here in my house and things that I'm not using. Um, nice clothing, nice glasses, nice all kinds of stuff, watches. Um, but I also have, you know, an Amazon merch store that has nothing upload. I mean, barely anything uploaded to it with the capacity of having 50 shirt designs a day uploaded to it. And I'm not doing it. So that's basically the kind of way that I'm thinking. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you did hit that like button and leave a comment and that would be greatly appreciated as well. If you're interested in being in Thrift Battle, okay, we're going to start a Thrift Battle next week for sure, then DM me, all right, at Instagram at the Bonafide Hustler, the Bonafide Hustler, all together on Instagram. Say, I would love to be on Thrift Battle. Make sure you have good internet connection, good camera, and decent audio, and we can get you on that show eventually. So I would imagine by now, because I made the Instagram story earlier today, that show number one's probably filled up, maybe all the way up to show number five, for all I know. But you know, let me know and I'll put you down in the, uh, I'll put your handle down as like, you want, this person wants to be on thrift battle and I'll make sure to write it on the pad and everything like that to where I will eventually get back to you. So that's pretty much it guys. Thank you so much. And, uh, you know, stay positive out there and, uh, you'll be seeing a lot more of me throughout the weeks for sure. And don't forget to check out my workout channel at bod damn too. If some people are talking about that, you can check it out too. If you want to get fit and just do some things at home. See ya. Bye.